All right, hi everyone. I'm here today with Kimbali Craig. Um, she is one of our authors from West 44, which is an imprint of Inslow Publishing and a sister company of Rosen. And we are here to talk about her recently published book, Justice. Um, but before we get into Justice, I wanted to talk a little bit about you, Kimbali, because you are a true creative spirit who cannot be put into a box. You have been an artist in residence at um, Paul Robeson High School. You're one of the founders of Bailey's Cafe, which is a very cool organization um, in New York that deals with building community with you through service and art. Um, you were also the creative director of Freedom Rag Magazine in New York, and you have also been um, a guest starring actress on Law & Order SVU, and now have also written a book, um, which is an incredible story about a young African-American high school student who is accused of stealing his favorite teacher's cell phone and wallet and what ensues as a result of that accusation. So a very timely book um, and an excellent one. You know, when I was reading it, I thought to myself, of course, regardless of age or background that you come from, there's certainly a lot that can be learned from this story and I think anyone could enjoy it. But what really hit me is that this belongs, I think, especially in the classroom. Um, I think a lot of you know, educators right now are trying to figure out how do we have these conversations on race and trust and social justice. And what I love about um, your book, Justice, is that it provides this excellent framework for having this discussion. Uh, I see this in an ELA classroom, a social studies classroom, the library and virtual learning especially. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about, you know, how this book is so perfect for these spaces. Um, Roger wanted to do his part in like this whole thing about social justice and making sure that he uh, makes sure that he's a part of the conversation mm -hmm. about what's happening. And they wanted to do a story where, um, you know, like a parent of color has a different conversation with their kids than the people of non-color, Caucasian descent, where uh, they're talking about, you know, what to look out for when you're out, outside with the police and to how to be careful. And just, uh, he wanted to find a way to address that conversation, like how that conversation happens in a household, an mm -hmm. African-American household primarily. And, um, and the first part of, the first time it was called the talk, you know, and because that's the conversation that they need to have with their teen boys. and now even girls you know with brianna yeah. taylor but um you know that that's how it started and then as it just kept going i i i always wanted a son and if i saw if i ever have a son's name would be justice for many mm -hmm. reasons just because um my life and my creative spirit is about justice i'm very passionate about race and about relationship and community and so justice is something that's just a part of who i am and i always wanted a son named justice and so I named the main character Justice. And as you know, the whole editing process came along, it became the title of the book, which is perfect for where right. we are now, for what the story is really actually about. The first place you start with success is in school, education, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. so you have to make it through all of that and then come to school rested, prepared, um, ready to learn. And so that looks like social injustice to me. I mean, with, with what you're talking about, um, cross-culture and, you know, being authentic, you, you're making me think of a, a theme in your book, and, and that is trust and how trust is built and broken um, in this book. But one thing that I really took away um, was, you know, the relationship between Justice and his teacher while they come from different, you know, backgrounds. Um, you know, they had their trust built up before it was strained. And I think that that was a really important part of, you know, how it plays out for them, you know, throughout the book and, and, and towards the ending. Um, so I, I wonder if you could talk with us, you know, even a little bit more about how, how do we build trust in a classroom between, you know, students and teachers um, who may come from different backgrounds and who, who may be of a different color. Um, how can we build trust so that when we make these mistakes and we have these, um, these conflicts, um, that we can, we can move through them? Can we talk, you know, maybe even more about that? 
just, I mean, each one, teach one is my thing, right. you know, like, right. you know, sharing, you know, like this, you can always be a learner, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. learning never stops, even though you're the hierarchy and the educator, you know, like those young people can teach, teach you a lot about surviving in a world that you, that you uh, might pro possibly be privileged of not living in or, or having to uh, survive to maintain your success, you know, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, um, you know, the way educators can look at that is, is, is finding ways to cross culture, you know, cross culture relationships, whether it's through music, activities, discussion, um, you know, like you, like you might have a, a, the, um, the privilege of looking at CNN and finding out what's happening in those neighborhoods but when, when these young people are living in those environments. Right. And so that's a totally different perspective. And so, of course, each one can teach one, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a way of starting looking at social injustice in the classroom and using your privilege to uplift, you know, young people and then using like their experiences to uplift or expand who you are. You know, and so that's a way to 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 start. You know, and in in the book, and just and with justice, it was like the teacher. You know, she's like she's not a she's 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 a, a white woman. She's not a, a and she she works in primarily a color uh, community in her school. And um, but she's 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 privy to all the rap music. She's like really interested in all the music. She knows the lyrics. She's like she's in depth with 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 black music. And they respect her for that, and they really appreciate her for that. I mean, and 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 she knows how to relate to them because I think it's coming from her who she who she is, you know. Right. Because young people are really transparent. So if you are not honest about who you are and bringing them your real person, they can see right through it. I make sure to expose them to something. I know that they don't know. I know their music too. I mean, come on, it's all over the radio, but I might expose them to something. I don't know, Erica about do a bag lady and they'll go like, bag lady? I'm like, yeah, but she's talking about a whole bunch of different ways of carrying a bag, but, you know, and then we might discuss it. And then they might tell me something about somebody saying I'm drowning. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, and then they're like, yeah, you know, drowning all this money, he got all this. And I'm like, well, but he got to be drowning in like his life, you know? I mean, I'm looking at it a different way. And then we're having this discussion that has nothing to do with the activity, but we're building a relationship right. immediately right there. And so when it comes to like, you know, like meeting uh, the goals and as far as and what the academic goals are, you know, you have a better chance of reaching them if they're struggling or if they're intimidated or if they're, you know, like checked out, they're not interested. You know, you, you have a better chance of finding out how to pull them in. I mean, I've learned so much from young people about honesty that it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, it's right. like they're a place where you can learn how to be honest. So trust mm -hmm. is the number one thing for success in the classroom. And, right. and to build community is a, is a second thing for success, you know. And mm -hmm. that's why I put so much of that in the book. Like, Miss Clarendon wanted to try this thing called the honor code, you know, where she wanted to leave her bag and trust everybody and and they were like ma'am you, are you crazy you, you think you can leave your bag and your wallet open are you kidding me and he, and, and justice was like no that's kind of cool i mean i think we should try it out i mean he was, they were into it some students were like into that that idea like this white woman could come in and and trust all of them it made them feel like really validated mm -hmm. and she was taking a risk but to herself she was just being she wanted to show them something that she knew that they didn't know and then somehow in the story that goes left, but it goes left because of their conditions and because they're what they're dealing with in their struggle. It doesn't go left because of, of maliciousness. Right. It doesn't. That doesn't go left because of that. You know, when you read the story, you know, when the story is, when you guys get the book, you'll know <laughs> that that it doesn't go left because of that. It goes left because of circumstances um, that has to do with we do with poverty, environment, and a lot of things that we're talking about and lack of privilege. You know, and injustice circumstances. Well, with, as you're talking about, you know, Mrs. C, one of the characters, you know, in the book, obviously, um, there's a quote that comes to my mind, and I'm not going to get it perfect. I was, you know, on social media, and, um, but, it, but it really hit me, so I'm going to paraphrase it um, here now. But it, the gist of it was that, you know, when we're having these conversations about um, race, 
if you are a person of color, um, you know, the quote was saying that you, you're not seeing that as a purely academic discussion. You know, you may be Definitely. reliving or um, re-experiencing, you know, different things that have happened to you as a, as a result of, of what's happened in the past. And if you are, you know, staying calm or emotionally detached, um, when you're having that kind of conversation, that's actually a sign of your privilege. And that really hit me like a ton of bricks. I had never, you know, conceptualized it that way. Um, and I feel like your story, there's a scene in your story that outlines that, you know, really well. And I was hoping that, you know, you would share that with us um, from the book. Because I think it, it goes, yeah, yeah. goes to that. Well, I can I can kind of I can kind of set it up a little bit yeah. too. That'd be awesome. You know, um, you know, like like I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it brings like like you said, uh, it brings like pain and reliving it. But what it mm -hmm. what it can do is like like I said, if you're watching something on CNN and then you're talking about you know like police brutality or mm -hmm. like gun violence and. Mm -hmm. And, and you're talking to maybe some students who have lost their very dear friends or family members through gun violence. And, and there was no way out of the situation. No matter how much they wanted to be out of, to be out of it, their environment was, was consumed with this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not something that they're so far away from that they can have a discussion about it without having an emotional attachment to it or some kind of uh, emotional, maybe trauma related to it. Maybe a, maybe they've experienced police brutality themselves. They couldn't believe that they got away and the cop let them go and they were scared walking home. They were crying. They couldn't believe. I saw a movie once and I think it was Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this cop was like a bad, vicious cop. And he, he they were hanging out one night, one day and the, and the main character that got out in Boys in the Hood, the character by Cooper Gooden, he got, he got out. Um, he survived all of everything, but he lost his friend, of course, in a gun violence situation, his very best friend. But they were driving and the cop targeted, targeted them, primarily because he was someone who was trying to get out. So sometimes, you know, crabs in a barrel, they pull you down. Mm -hmm. And he put a gun in his mouth and was talking to him the whole time, like, yeah, I could shoot you right now and this and that, and you, I, would be, I wouldn't be in the wrong, I'm a police officer. And the kid couldn't say a word, but he was crying silent tears and when he got home he went to his girlfriend's house and he was punching and crying punching and crying he just felt so demasculated you know he didn't feel like a man anymore he felt so so vulnerable he was so afraid he just cried and because he was he was so intimidated by that moment but he also was so happy to have survived to come home you know so those those kind of discussions or drug drug addiction you know or like Things like uh, uh, domestic violence, any anything like that, uh, sometimes it's closer to home to students who live in an environment that is ridden with poverty, you know, yeah. ridden with a lack of resources, and all of a sudden we talked about food deserts and things right. like that. Mm -hmm. There, that 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 stuff is very close to home, so it just brings these emotions right to the forefront. It brings right. them right up to who they are. It, it's not mm -hmm. like they're reliving this pain. It just make it puts them right where they're trying to escape maybe in your room class they're trying to escape that reality or they're trying to make sure that you see them as someone who isn't that reality and they work so hard to not be that person you know like like injustice this scene in, um on page 51 injustice he he himself and his mother has worked so hard to make sure that he is a person that that isn't a person that you would would, would assume would be a thief or someone who you would assume would be a thug. He worked so hard to just be himself and and be this kind of artistic, cool kid, but he lives in that environment. So mm -hmm. of course he has to survive. And his mother worked so hard to make sure she does everything she can to give her son uh, 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 morals and values and things like that. But when he walks out that door, you know, it's up to the world to, 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 to handle him. And she's, so in, in the book, when Mrs. C, uh, assume something that is so wrong it this is where it brings it right to the forefront right it says um justice slipped back into his seat and all the other students had left the classroom leaving just him and miss c take a seat near here near me justice she was growing more, even more sterner she looked and sounded like a strange all of a sudden then an odd new look on her face sparked his curiosity so justice looked her directly in the eye the eye contact but because of what he knew, he grew uncomfortable. He looked down at his shoes. 
look, Justice, I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed about all of this. I mean, I expected so much more from you. She does think I did it. She thinks I'm a thief. How could she? That's Justice, like, she can't believe it. Justice raised his head in shock, searched her face for the old Mrs. C, the one who liked and admired him and trusted him. Don't worry, I'm not gonna write you up a, a report, okay? I don't wanna make a big deal about this. I just need you to return my cell phone and my wallet and I need it back on my desk by tomorrow morning. Then we can put this whole thing behind us and start over with a clean slate, okay? How's that? Justice stood up unsteadily on his feet. He was shocked. He couldn't believe, he couldn't believe she thought he was a thief. His feelings were hurt. He was insulted. He was offended. It turns out she doesn't know me at all. After all this time, after all our conversations, I mean, he's heartbroken, mm -hmm. you know? He respected Miss Clarendon a lot. After all, she was the one who tried to warn, he, after all, he was the one who tried to warn her about the dangers of the honor code before she got robbed. I mean, he spent the last 24 hours trying to get her things back, you know? I mean, so mm -hmm. that, that is like, he, he's, he's like, I thought that you saw me outside of my box. I live in a box. And mm -hmm. I thought you knew I lived in that box. And I thought you knew out of everything we've been through, the conversations we had, the person you've showed me you are, that you knew that no matter what the situation was, I would never do anything that's inside that box to anyone, especially to you. It's just not something I wanna be and, and not the person I, I wanna be, I am. And no matter what it looks like, miss, why me, you know? I mean, how could, how could, I, how could, how could you assume that, you know? And so that's what I mean, it brings it right to, you know, he's like looking for the old Mrs. C. He's like, is she there? Wait a minute, what's going on with her? Like, she think right. I stole this? I know, I know she doesn't think I stole this. I mean, me and her are too cool for that. Right. I mean, but, but she just, she, she's in a situation where all the circumstances line up. That's all done intentionally. You know, like, you know, he's the one who rapped about it. He's the one she saw in the hallway. He's the mm -hmm. one who was the last one in the building. All these things to set up how you could assume something and be completely wrong, you know, based on, you're assuming it based on the, the um, you know, like the evidence that he's there, he rapped, but you're also assuming it on social, social, our social norms, mm -hmm. that like he comes from this environment, there's no way he could not have these traits. I mean, I know I give him the benefit of the doubt, but maybe I'm just being gullible, you know, here as a, as a white teacher and hoping for the best, when the reality is he does live in this kind of neighborhood, he does come from this kind of stuff. So how could he not be this person if, if at some time, maybe once or twice in his life? So she, that's just a social norm that we're living in that is like identifying, helps to identify or, or try to identify us through class and race. And a, a lot of the times it's, 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 it's so unfair and it's, it's, it's full of injustice. Well, when we, you know, when we make these mistakes, um, you know, like Mrs. C, you know, like what happened with your students at school, um, how do we heal in these situations? You know, how does true healing take place? Because it seems like we're at a point in our society where we're trying to come to the table um, yeah. and have these discussions, but now we need to move the dial, right? Now we need to move into what true healing can look like so we can move forward. So I was hoping you could talk to us about what, what should that healing process look like? I mean, just like I said with the Black Lives Matter, you know, these people are marching because of their compassion about what happened to George Floyd. You can't see the video without like, you know, like you meet your compassion. If you're a certain kind of human being, that's going to hit you right there. So I think like whenever you like make some kind of mistake like that, that has a lot to do with being an outsider or privilege or, 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 um, judgment through like racial you know um ra being um so, so different cultures ra racially that you just immediately right it's, as soon as you are, are don't because you're in school or because you're the teacher or you're the principal or you're the whatever the hierarchy situation don't don't let don't use that to your advantage immediately show compassion like immediately mm -hmm. like I, i'm wrong i mean you're right, I'm so wrong for that. Like to show your flaws immediately. Mm -hmm. your, your, it was, it's a flaw that you right. had. It was, it's, a, it's a flaw that you made that mistake. It's not, a lot of times it's not intentional. It, might, it was intentional for me. It was, it was 
it was such a flaw that mm -hmm. I just owned it immediately. Well, let me ask you this. Are you working on anything new right now? Oh, well, this whole, pro this whole series, Justice, um, is the first book. And Roger, uh, Rosen, they were just, just like, I mean, angels that came into my life. I was like thinking, you know, that me, and they were like, no, they want to do four books. So, so awesome. it's like, this is a, the second book I'm working on is uh, Ebony, primarily Ebony Story. When you get to the end of the story, you will see why Ebony Story is, more, is just as important next. And so uh, I'm working on the uh, second main character story. This is our next book. And, and then just continuing this, this community and this, uh, uh, their lives and, and a lot of things that they, they're experiencing. And who knows, you know, like I, I wrote these books to one day that they would be after school specials. I would turn them into short mm -hmm. films. So I, I write them so that they can also be movies. So that's, that's what's next with, with um with justice and you know it's like four more books three more books coming up but the second one's already in the works i'm almost almost finished with it and um yeah it's ebony's story very cool i'm really well, excited about that until then i want people to know that um you can totally check out justice um by going to west44books.com this book is already being used in a virtual learning setting. I've been told. Oh, yeah. you know, can you tell me a little bit about that before we oh, go? Yeah, I was I was contacted um, online by this teacher in uh, Aurora, Illinois, and I live in Brooklyn. And she was telling me that her her, her students are primarily Latinos, mm -hmm. and that they chose this book for themselves. Like they had an option to choose whatever book they wanted. And when they chose my book, I was just like so humbled. Awesome. And she said, "Thank you so much for giving us such rich, rich, rich topics to discuss." And and, and for the ways for her to help see her students in a way for them to share differently. And then, you know, just, just that it was the virtual learning for them was that they chose the books and they stuck, mm -hmm. they stuck with it. I mean, to the end and they wanted to do it, I think because of how, how it reads and what it's about, how it relates to, to, to them. No, even if, even though they were, they were Latinos, mm -hmm. they, 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 these stories are still ring true to anyone who's in an urban environment or anyone who is a statistic of stereotyping or anything like that, then the book will resonate with that, with that group of young people. Absolutely. And so they, they, I was extremely happy to start to, you know, interact with these young people and, and feed them as much as I could about the justice, what justice brought up, brought up for them. So I think it's, it's right on for where we are right now with COVID, virtual learning. It's a rich topic for, for teachers to be able to talk about and dive into. And then it, it gives a platform for young people to be more honest about their perspective of what's going on and how they feel about, you know, the climate of the change, the of social change that we're living in now. And so that, that's why I think it was, it, you know, it was such a success immediately. Like it sold out on um, twice and mm -hmm. I don't know I'm just looking forward to more and more work with it and more and more with the next few books that come along with the story me too I hope that um after you finished uh your next book that we get to do this again you know and yeah and me too I, I, absolutely. <laughs> yeah all right well thank you everyone for watching again check out justice and um Kabali, I hope I see you very soon in the future yeah you guys too bye-bye thank you so much Bye.